the look east tonight we're live from impington village college in cambridgeshire from tomorrow thousands of children across the region will be going back to school the experts tell us that cases of swine flu will rise dramatically tonight a look at the predictions and we'll be asking how prepared are we we'll hear from people who've had the virus and ask what will happen if thousands of people take time off sick also tonight police say a man who was shot well let me just tell you a little bit about the village college we're about three miles from the center of cambridge uh, this school has a sixth form of about 280 and about 1100 other pupils so 1400 children come here to school part of this building is actually grade one listed it was built in 1939 and of course from tomorrow these desks will all be full the children come back here at the start of a new term this school is no stranger to swine flu last term it closed its doors after two pupils were taken ill and a number of children were put into quarantine during a school trip to china after some of the party were seen to have symptoms of swine flu if the health experts are right by christmas the number of swine flu cases will have increased tenfold so are we ready and how worried should we be Children are among those most likely to catch swine flu. Daniel and Tilly have just had it. Both have recovered. Seven-year-old Daniel was off school in Cambridge for just a few days, but he felt pretty grotty. I felt real wheezy, um, got a croaky voice, um, got bad cough, um, and I felt um, real bad sick. It's a recoverable illness. It is really, really rare that the complications develop and the child is, is ill. For the, he was fine, he was ill, he got better. That? Tilly reacted badly when she was given a dose of the antiviral Tamiflu. That was a really worrying day for us, um, the day we first gave her Tamiflu. Um, so it's uh, not that mild. Not one of my favourite memories of recent times, certainly. With school term starting, some are now worried it could get far worse. The school should shut. If there's more cases, then the school should shut. Uh, you know, government is right in taking a decision that they might reopen again, as long as people take uh, you know, due care of themselves. Health chiefs say more deaths can be expected after a man from Essex became the first in Britain. Swine flu claimed its first victim in our region last month. In all, four people from the east have died. At the end of July, around 30,000 people were assessed to have swine flu. Last week, it was down to just 4,000. Hospital admissions are down from 67 people to 26. Two are critically ill. Flu viruses can spread. But doctors expect a surge this autumn, after children go back to school and more people stay indoors. Perfect conditions for the virus to spread. Locally, up to 70,000 people have it. It could increase tenfold. Another two people have died in South Australia from swine flu-related causes. Experts are looking to Australia for evidence, which has already seen a surge in cases because their winter is ahead of ours. At the swine flu pandemic incident room in Cambridgeshire, they think they'll be able to manage. We are preparing to be able to best cope with that situation if it ever happens in October in terms of how to implement vaccination strategies, in terms of how we deal with our critically ill patients. If you can put that mask on, Jane, both straps over your head. Frontline staff like these nurses in Norwich are preparing for the worst, but it's important to emphasize that seasonal flu kills far more people. When Daniel caught the virus, there was no vaccine. But this autumn, children across the region will be among the first to be offered it, in time for the predicted swine flu surge. Alex Dunlop, BBC Look East. So we can say with some certainty that this school and most others will have cases of swine flu. But unlike last term, this school won't be forced to close. The Health Protection Agency is changing its advice to schools. Well, I don't think there's such a thing as a swine flu school. I think we've got swine flu within the community. They could catch it from a whole range of different uh, people, different settings, not just the school. And there's no advantage in closing the school uh, to help prevent that happening. Let's talk. Well, let's talk now to the head teacher here, first of all, and um, find out exactly what the situation, as far as you're concerned, um, about the start of the new season. 
Um, our advice, which we got through an email um, only yesterday, was, was that we'd be expected to stay open, uh, that, that the policy of containment, which clearly the authorities were trying to pursue before the summer, has been abandoned, and that it's very much focused on treatment, and that students will be... So was it a mistake to close it last time, do you think? I'm not the expert. I went on the advice. Uh, I mean, certainly from our perspective, it disrupted the college enormously. Uh, we very much wanted to stay open. Um, we were following the advice that was there, and it seemed to be probably the right advice at the time. Um, of course, that was two, three months ago. We're now looking ahead to the, the, to the summer, to the autumn, uh, and hopefully we'll have a, a, a relatively decent term without too much disruption. But the experts tell us that it's going to get worse. Yeah, I think if you look at the, the evidence that's coming through, the tenfold increase, uh, that could clearly pose a problem for, for schools, for businesses, um, but we'll adapt. We have our, our emergency plans in place, which will... We'll look to do what we can, depending on the number of staff we have off. Of course, there will be corresponding numbers of children off. Uh, so schools will, will sort of fluctuate and be fluid around that. Robert Campbell, thank you for having us here tonight. I just want to have a quick word with you, and who was one of those who was putting quarantine in China. What was, I mean, were you worried about the fact that you might be getting it or not? Um, I wasn't actually that worried, because from what I heard, it wasn't too, too serious, serious an illness to get. You just felt bad for a couple of days and then you were let out of the hospital, so I wasn't particularly worried. But you were looked after well in China? We were looked after well. We were given enough to eat and we were kept entertained. Good. Well, it's good to see you looking so fit and well, as I say, and thank you for having us here tonight. We'll be back later in the programme to put some of your questions to the Health Protection Agency, but for now, back to Susie in the studio. Stuart, thank you. Other news now. Police have described the shooting of a man in Luton as a targeted attack. Armed police were called to Haymarket Road in the Lucy Farm area of the town after shots were fired just before nine last night. The area has been cordoned off all day. Hidden from view, a murder scene on the edge of a play park. Here, a 22-year-old was shot in the head. Residents living locally who heard the gunshots, looked out of their window, saw what had happened and they called the emergency services and we were obviously here within minutes. Armed response officers actually carried out a search of the area to see if the offenders were still around. High visibility patrols have been in the area ever since to reassure residents. The police tell us to stay back and everything and uh, he said it was uh, money on the floor and blood and what have you. So it was uh, quite nasty but scared to go out now. Locals say it's not a bad part of town but they have had problems with drug dealers who use this bench just yards away. I was over there last week with the kids and you see them giving bits and pieces, cars coming up, you know, up and then jumping out and then getting back in the cars and driving off. But friends of the dead man, named locally as Richard Long, told us he was a quiet family man with a new baby, not someone who they'd expect to be involved in trouble. I think what everyone can do at the moment is call for calm, let the police do their job, let's not talk this up as an incident involving rival gangs or any such kind of thing which we don't yet know to be true. Police will continue to gather evidence looking for witnesses, a weapon and a motive. Nikki Jenkins, BBC Look East in Luton.